Hi everybody, um, welcome to Junk Drawer Art with Miss Riley. I'm Miss Riley. Uh, normally today would be Toilet Paper Roll Tuesday, but actually um, it is Cinco de Mayo. Um, so I kind of thought that would be a little more important. We're going to take a look at um, a fun activity that we can do to honor that, but I want to talk to you for a few minutes about Cinco de Mayo first um, before we get started. I um, So Cinco de Mayo is a holiday that is actually not celebrated that widely in Mexico. Um, it is a day commemorating a battle that happened between um, the, the people of Mexico and the people of France, and it, and it was a victory for Mexico. So it is a significant day. Um, but really, it's morphed into um, a celebration that happens more in the United States, and um, it is for people who are of Mexican heritage to celebrate their heritage and celebrate their country. Um, so I'm always really careful around this day and thinking about what kinds of crafts I do with children. And I think about that anytime I am, when I'm doing my um, World Travel Wednesdays. And it's really important to think when you're making art for, for recognizing another culture to make sure that you're being culturally sensitive and uh, not just creating art that could um, stereotype a culture or um, make fun of a culture or I try to choose things that really represent the heritage and um, the, the artistic heritage of the country that I'm talking about. And so today for Cinco de Mayo, um, I wanted to focus on something um, called papel picado. And so it is this um, beautiful, um, these decorative banners that are created often for a variety of um, celebrations in the country of Mexico and for people of Mexican heritage. Um, they're these beautiful, colorful tissue paper banners that are created. Um, they are made for um, Dia de los Muertos. They are made for Christmas. Um, they are made for, honestly, all kinds of religious and secular holidays. And they are strong. You can see the image I have down here. They're strung between buildings or over windows or in um, common areas. Um, they flow in the wind. They're kind of like little flags, little banners. And so they're, they're mostly made of tissue paper. Um, the tradition actually started a long time ago, um, as far away as is the, um, the ancient people who lived in the land. Um, they actually would paint on these banners and write stories. And it morphed into this tradition in Mexico um, at, where they would take these stacks. Actually, the way they create them, they mass produce them. And they stack the tissue paper up in thick stacks. And the artist uses a chisel to chisel the design into all of the papers at the same time. And so when you pull them apart, it's paper after paper after paper. I'm going to show you a simpler way to create these banners. All you need is tissue paper or any other kind of thin paper. You can do it with regular paper, but tissue paper, colorful tissue paper looks the best. This is just gift wrap tissue paper. This isn't even fancy like art tissue paper. Um, a pair of scissors. And then if you want to hang them up, I just have cheap twine and some tape. Um, so really what I'm going to do is unfold my tissue paper and I really want to start um, with like a square or a rectangle shape because I'm going to be folding this. Honestly, squares are the best. So what I'm actually going to do with this, this is a perfect square piece of tissue paper. I am going to cut it in half right down the middle. It really doesn't matter what size as long as it's relatively square. You kind of want to make a few of these so I can set that aside and cut that in half to make another one. I'm going to get started with this one first. So I'll make two today. I'll make a pink one. I also have this teal paper. Um, it really, and again, this is a square tissue paper, which kind of makes it easier. I'm going to open it up. Cut it in half. A lot of times in uh, Mexico, they theme the colors based on what they're celebrating. So like at Christmas, um, they use red um, and green tissue papers. Um, they use these a lot to celebrate their actual Independence Day um, in September. And um, they use the colors of the Mexican flag, which are white and green and red. So I have my squares here. And we're going to approach making this like you probably have 
made paper snowflakes before with coffee filters. So you fold it up a few times into a triangle, you put some snips in it, you open it up and it makes a snowflake. We're gonna do kind of the same idea. So I'm gonna fold it in half, make a rectangle, there you go. I'm gonna fold that in half again. And how many times you decide to fold is up to you. It really depends on probably the age of the kids that you're working with. Um, and I say that because the more you fold it, the more difficult it is to cut into it. You all start to get so thick. And um, if you have a kid who has like safety scissors, just two or three folds might be enough. So the last fold I wanna make sure I make is more of a triangle fold. And the more you, sorry, that was not straight. The more you do this, and the next part I'm about to tell you is kind of confusing, but the more you work with it, the easier it will be able to see. As I cut into this, I wanna try as much as I can not to put a lot of cuts um, on the piece that is going to be on the outside of the square. So as I'm folding it, I'm kind of looking and I'm seeing that this edge, if you look and see, is going to be my outside line. Because if you start cutting that up too much, you lose the square shape and it makes it look a little messier. It's not the end of the world if you do it. Um, but if you're just looking for the traditional look like I showed you, you're not gonna cut this outside corner. And usually if you're folding the right way, it's gonna be the shortest side. So you're cutting the longer side. What you can do now is actually just start cutting different notches into it. And if they get stuck, let me just pull them out. You can cut all different kinds of designs. You can cut the corner off if you'd like to create a little design in the middle. Um, this is gonna kind of give me kind of like a cool star look right here. And I actually might go and do something a little more advanced here in the middle. I might cut like a little rhombus out. And as you open these up, what it gives you is this really pretty paper flag kind of look. Um, I might do something even a little more elaborate with this one. That's kind of your simple look. And the cool thing about this is since you have, I have all these squares over here, you can do this over and over and over again. And that's what um, the people who, who work on these, the people um, from Mexico, they, they make multiple of them to string them across to make like banners. So again, I'm folding it in half sorry, <laughs> in half to make a rectangle. Folding it again. I'm going to fold this one. I might fold this one an extra time and see. And do a square. Ooh. I don't know. You think I can do it? Let's see if I can cut it. I'm going to make it really tiny. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut that. We'll give it a whirl. So do some little triangle cuts in it. Yeah, that's pretty tough. If I didn't have these thick fabric scissors, I wouldn't be able to cut that. Let's do lots of little cuts. It is going to give you like a lace work, like lots of little holes. The bigger the cuts, obviously, the more you'll have missing. These little scraps that are falling, you can throw them away or actually they're fun. Um, I actually save those in the classroom. And we do a lot of um, collaging with them. They're fun for, you know, we talked about like Eric Carle and collaging pieces of tissue paper. You can save these and kind of glue them down and make really pretty collages. You don't want to throw them away. I try not to throw any paper away, even little scraps you can do fun things with. All right, let's see how this guy looks. Yeah, you have to be really careful as you pull them apart. They might get hung up. See, the more you fold it, the more intricate and lace-like your design is going to be. So as far as hanging these, um, the easiest thing to do is just to take a, some twine. I'm just gonna do a single one, just to show you. Um, you can do it as long as you want to. You can string these together. They look really pretty hung up in windows. And I'm just going to take it, let me pull it back so you can see. And I'm going to line it right here at the top and actually kind of fold the top of this over in a few places and secure it with tape. 
and I'll hold it up in a minute and let you see what I did. So I'm just like rolling the top of it, the lip of it over and just using a little bit of clear tape. And I'll show you, mine's a little messy. You can take time to make yours neater. So I just, like I said, rolled the lip of it over and just taped it down in a few spaces and that should be enough to hold it up. So you have these pretty um, beautiful um, papel picado, which is like a little paper. Um, these beautiful banners that you can hang up to celebrate Cinco de Mayo um, in a in a artistic kind of way. Um, so I hope you guys have a great day today. Um, if you are of Mexican heritage, I hope you have a great day celebrating. Um, I hope maybe this can help you um, if we're still stuck at home, you know, brighten up your house a little bit, make it a little more exciting. Um, please send me pictures on Class Dojo or on Facebook or you can send them to me or say hey to me on Twitter or Instagram at CS Riley Teach. I hope you guys have a wonderful Cinco de Mayo and I will see you tomorrow for World Travel Wednesday. Bye.